Now, Inside Broadway, the podcast about everything theater. From what happens behind the scenes to what to see on stage to the inside scoop from the stars and people who make it all happen. Here are your hosts, Michael Riedel and Christine Nagy. So, Christine, one of the great moments in my theater-going life was when I went out to Minneapolis to see uh, Disney's The Lion King. Now, no one had seen it. It was brand new. We Mm -hmm. didn't know anything about it. Uh, Julie Taymor was the director and very talented woman, but you just couldn't quite put Disney with Julie Taymor. She did a lot of avant-garde kind of shows. So I went out there, I would have to say kind of skeptically, and I sat with my arms crossed, you know, let's see. Let's see what Disney has to show us. Michael Riedel, the reviewer at this point. Yes, my pencil poised on my notebook, ready (laughs) to kill. And then, of course, uh, The Lion King began with this beautiful papier-mâché sun coming up over the Serengeti. And then I think a cheetah, puppet cheetah came on. And then I remember, and a memory I'll always have for the rest of my life, these life-size giraffes, Mm -hmm. which came loping onto the stage during the circle of life. And by the end of that number... Uh, I was standing on my seat, on my seat cheering with everybody else, 1,500 other people in Minneapolis. Were, and were you crying? It actually it, crying, it brought I don't me do. to tears. Crying, I don't I do. do. <laughs> I'm a crier. When I see all that beautiful energy on the stage, I cry. It's so moving. And that was such a beautiful show yep. to experience for the first time in many times. Absolutely. It was a real thrill. And yeah. Disney is celebrating its 25th anniversary on Broadway. It has given us Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, of course, Aladdin. Frozen is the latest one. And one that I always liked, which has a great score that I hear is coming back, is Aida. Elton right. John and Tim Rice's Aida. Wonderful. So joining us in our, our little Disney on parade we have I, yes. here today. We have a round table. We have the yeah. uh, leader of the parade, an old friend of mine, Thomas Schumacher, who is the president and producer of Disney Theatricals. And he's brought with him some of uh, the actors who have performed in many Disney shows. Joining us, we have uh, Ashley Brown, who was the original Mary Poppins on Broadway. And you were Belle number... 15. <laughs> All right. You know, lucky 15. That's it. Someone's got to do it. And an old friend of mine, uh, the great actor Jonathan Freeman, who was the original Jafar in Aladdin. And you were also, uh, what uh, utensil were you in uh, Beauty and the Beast? I was the clock, You were Michael. the clock. Not, a, <laughs> not yeah. a utensil. I like to say Clocksworth. His name was Cogsworth. <laughs> right, that's it. And Michael James Scott is currently the genie in Aladdin, and uh, your other uh, Disney role was? Yes, that was a part of Tarzan. Oh. Which, yes, yes, exactly. Were you in the loin, in the cl- uh, <laughs> bathing suit loincloth? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was that, and then I also, I, I covered Turk um, as well, which was kind of crazy, but I did, I did it for two weeks. Well, welcome two all. Weeks. Welcome all to mm-hmm. Disney on Parade. Thank so you. Uh, it's wonderful to have you all here. Thank you, Tom. I want to ask you since this is a uh, uh, a Broadway podcast, I want to talk about Howard Ashman and Alan Menken, who wrote uh, the Little Mermaid for you when you were in at, at animation and who did Beauty and the Beast. Can you tell us? Because a lot of people have forgotten the importance of of Howard Ashman and his contribution to this empire that Disney is now on Broadway. Yeah, it it can't be overstated that the the impact that Howard had. Howard had. You know, his his big, most famous show from New York, of course, was Little Shop of Horrors, right. um, which was an off-Broadway show. And which he did with Alan Menken. With Alan Menken. And, and Howard was so remarkable. But, you know, Broadway didn't really go his way. And he ends up, through a, a long series of connections, coming out to California and is asked if he'd like to do something in animation. And one of the projects immediately that, that he grabbed and brought Alan out for was The Little Mermaid. And nobody at the time, there was no big plan. There was no idea of a theatrical future. There was no idea of even that Little Mermaid would ever become the impactful film it was. But Howard and Allen created this idea of Little Mermaid with the directors John Musker and Ron Clements to make it a proper musical in the Broadway form where there's an I Want song for the girl, where there's production numbers. And it's, in fact, crafted like a Broadway show. And that, of course, then led to Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and on and on. And even though Lion King fits in there, Lion King is obviously not crafted as as a film that, that should be a Broadway show, where Mermaid and Beauty and Aladdin certainly are. And mm. that's really the vision of Howard. And we should say that you know Howard died, sadly, of AIDS at only... Uh... 40? He was really young. He actually died before the film of Beauty and the Beast even came opened. Out, right. And so by the time we did Aladdin, um, Tim Rice came in to finish the movie of Aladdin because all these new songs were required. And then mm-hmm. Howard, uh, then, then uh, Tim Rice also finished the Broadway show. Mm-hmm. So there's uh, Howard's, Howard's lyrics and, of course, Tim Rice's great lyrics. And how fast is Alan Menken when he comes up with a melody for you guys? Alan Menken is, <laughs> is unbelievably, for, for two reasons. One, he, um, 
he, he can come up with a song and you'll say, it's not quite right. And he'll do it again and do it again. He's, he's fearless about throwing things out because he just wants it to be great. And it, he's, uh, he's the most collaborative, most charming, most delightful partner anyone could have. Mm. Now, Ashley, can you tell us about auditioning for uh, Disney? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I actually did this show called On the Record. It was just a tour. So uh-huh. that was my very first show with Disney Theatricals. And, and you were just out of school. A week out of school. Like, oh. I was thinking I was going to be working at Banana Republic, you know, like <laughs> earning my keep. And I went in. It was my senior showcase. And I'll never forget, through that showcase, Tara Rubin, a ca- the casting director, brought me in for On the Record. And, again, I was sleeping on my friend's couch, couch in the East Village. And I only had, like, one outfit. And I went in being like, with Tom, with everybody. And all I have to say is thank goodness the character I was playing with on the record was supposed to be have zero experience and a nervous wreck because that's what I was. I was just like, what has happened in my life to get me to this point? And it just has, it started my relationship and it's, they've become my family. So now, John- pretty nerve wracking. Uh, Jonathan, <laughs> your, your first association with Disney was, uh, you were the voice of Jafar in the, uh, in the movie. Yes, the 1992 film. Do you have to a- audition for that? Did I? Yeah. Oh, sure I did. So you come in with like an evil, can you give us like an evil Jafar laugh that got you the part? Right now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Michael, it's 1030. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do Something it. like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I auditioned and I auditioned again with big, big gaps of time, three months uh, in between. Hmm. And then they gave you the part on Broadway to create. Yes. Mm. It gave me the part. <laughs> I like the way you said that. Well, you, you didn't audition for Broadway. No, I didn't audition, but I, uh, I, I admit I, I had to think about it after so many years, you know. And not because I didn't want to do it, but uh, I always say my biological clock was ticking too, number one. And I <laughs> knew I would be in the room with all of these new uh, people that had uh, new ideas and new ways to bring the material to life. And I thought... Can I really recreate this character after so many years? And mm. I was worried. Did you want him, Tom, because of the voice? You wanted that voice on the Broadway stage? Well, we had met because of him doing the voice, because he also did the voice in every theme park attraction, every ice show, every recording, every sequel, <laughs> every TV series, every everything. But before he did Aladdin with us, he had also been in Beauty and the Beast, and he'd created the role of um, Grimsby in Little Mermaid, and he'd been Admiral Boom and the chairman in Mary Poppins. So we had a deep relationship. And I said, we're going to do a reading, and you have to come do the reading. Mm-hmm. And then at the reading, the very first line he had, everyone sitting there in the first day reading it down, screamed and cheered because the actual Jafar was in the room. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I what think that's that? so exciting for the audience when we went, you know, when we went to see it in the theater that that it was you. It was though you had come to life, right, from the yes. film for us. And you did stay what? with the show uh, for quite some time, right? I'm still doing it. You're still doing the show. Five years. Yes. Isn't that right? That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. And now, Michael, your uh, first time you went before the uh, the Disney uh, poobahs. Oh, gosh. Well, yes. I mean, I. it's crazy because Disney is in my... It's in my DNA. I, I grew. I'm a Florida kid. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Oh, oh wow! Well, you're I, a neighbor. I yes, like it is part of my thing. I was a little Disney kid. Like I did the in the in the parks. Um, actually, I think Tom and I figured that when he was there. I was, <laughs> there was a time when we both were like working in the, at, park. Uh, in the park at the same time. We figured it out, which is crazy. Tom but, may have been at a different level than you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Small details. Although it, he could have been right next to me kicking, you know, kicking his face. So I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and still doing his job. So, so you, were da- you were dancing in some dancing, of those. I was dancing, I was singing, I was a show kid. So I, so it's been a part of me. So th- this sort of full circle, and then my career has been on Broadway. So to have this sort of full circle, you know, with Disney theatricals and making it, you know, a part of my Broadway career has been unbelievable. I came in, I mean, Tarzan was a sort of a fast sort of thing, um, but I really, so it was kind of like my, I think it was kind of like my prep into the the sort of the Disney, the Disney family, if you will. I've, I've, I, and then in Aladdin, I actually was a part of a reading that was, I didn't know it at the time. It was a, it was a, it was a reading that they did from their Seattle out of town trial and they were doing all the changes that they had. It was like, your audition. And basically it ended up being my audition and I did not know at the time. That's that better. It was better. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I did not know, but I walked into the room that day before matinee of Book of Mormon. I was doing Book of Mormon at the time. I walked oh, yeah. into a matinee uh, uh, at 10 a.m. and there was like everyone in this <laughs> sitting behind like a table and me and I was in the middle of Jonathan and, and Adam and like that. everyone and I was like 
oh my god and i said to casey i was like you did not tell me this and he was like well here you go <laughs> <laughs> welcome aboard and yeah. that that sort of began my journey with with the show i had no idea what i was getting myself into and i just did me so that's kind of how it happened. <laughs> for, that was my audition. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, I'm, Tom, probably directed mainly towards you, but uh, please jump in. The, the secret for the, the run of these shows, I know they're such beloved stories, they're wonderful films, then we bring them to Broadway, and they're here and they're lasting. So what do you think is the, the recipe for that? Well, the good thing is, is that if you get it right, they last. We've also not gotten them all right, which I, you know, I look across the table at my old pal Michael Riedel, and uh, we've mentioned. It. I remember a He's couple got of them. The Jafar laugh going right we, now, Michael Riedel. Yeah. We've been friends. We've been friends for a very long time, through through thin and thick. And uh, yeah, you know, we've we've had things that didn't quite land, but when they do land, it's because they connect with the audience. So here we are, five years into Aladdin. Jonathan's been there from the beginning. Michael James Scott has been there from the beginning. And it's five years and, and it's rolling, which is great. And of course, Lion King is, you know, yeah. now mm. there's the Statue of Liberty, there's Lion King, there's Phantom of the Opera, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and that's the way we like it. it. There's something about can you connect with the broadest possible audience? Can you get it so that the grandma wants to see it? Can you get it so that, um, that, that uh, you know, a date night wants to get it? Mm -hmm. see it? Like mm -hmm. Beauty and the Beast, big date night show, which people have forgotten. Um, the number one selling item. You, you can judge. You can judge the world uh, of theater by how the merchandise goes. Number one selling item was a single rose with a tag that said Beauty and the Beast, because guys would buy it for their girlfriends oh, when they came. Wow. So it tells wow. you. It tells you how big that title was as an adult yeah. title. Wow. And uh, you know that's when, when you get it right, you're hitting all of them. I think that's happening with Frozen as well. That seems to be. I went on a date, and it was a great date night. So I Ooh. think that's got. Mass appeal. Also. By the way, do you know what the you number know? one selling item is at a Rod Stewart concert? What would that be? A pair of underwear that says "Tonight's the Night." Oh, I kid oh. you not! <laughs> I you, kid you not. You know this? Why you should get on that time? <laughs> <It's on. laughs> Tonight's the yeah, night. Oh, yeah. I'd like to point out. I'd like to point out that we actually did sell Aida men's silk boxers oh. and if you'd like a pair i can send them to you because we sold like eight out of the two thousand <laughs> we made i want a pair Me too. Me too. <laughs> collector's items so i want to ask the actors here now you're playing beloved characters and i'm just curious now, how much freedom does Disney give you, Ashley, to make... When I'm in the room or not? <laughs> I, well, yes. I, say, I want <laughs> honest answers. How much freedom do you have to kind of play around with Mary Poppins and create your own Mary Poppins without the power of Disney looking down on your every single move? You know, I have to say I was pleasantly surprised at how much freedom I was given because of the new material of Mary Poppins. It's like, yes, you have a lot of the songs and the storyline of the movie, but you also had a lot of the books and brand new songs that I was able to kind of create and make my own. And for me, I think, you know, I'm a Southern girl. I came in never in a million years did I ever think I'd grow up and be a proper English nanny. <laughs> um, and, and so I think in my audition, once I got to know the creative team, I was like, what did I do to make you choose me? And I think I, my whole thing was like, I'm going to go in. Do I need a dialect coach? Absolutely. Do I need it? But I went in as Ashley as Mary Poppins versus like trying to go be Julie Andrews being Mary Poppins because she already did it her way in the most amazing way. I just tried to find my own avenue. And so my whole thing going in was to really bring a lot of the character that I read in the books to her, to my to to my Mary. And I was Richard Eyre was so awesome. And like your really, director, our director, yes, was able to like really help me find my Mary. And I was really thankful for that because it's big shoes to fill and people come in loving her. And my only job was to make sure they left feeling the same way. Mm. And so I felt that it was so iconic and to fill these shoes was a lot of pressure. Mm. But at the same time, being able to that they liked the Ashley isms that I brought to mm. her, I felt like I really could create my own Mary. And easier for you, Jonathan, since you created the character on the screen to do well, it on the stage? I have to I have to fill my own shoes. <laughs> 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 and it, and and sometimes I'm not sure that I do. <laughs> no really. People really have, why? You do. Well, you know, people have people have big ideas. You know, those the, the movies are enormous. I mean it's what it sticks with you for your whole life, those characters, the songs, you know, everything we've been talking about. 
Um, I don't know. I, I just sometimes feel like, oh, I gave them what they want tonight, or mm. oh, they didn't quite get it, or you know, I don't mm. know. Mm. Don't you ever feel like oh, that? Yes. I yeah. mean, I suppose the hard thing with playing the villain, though, is uh, sometimes you could go a little too over over the top and camp it up a little too much. Do you have to be wary of that? Uh, uh, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> Again, at 10.30 in the morning. How very, how very day. Um, no, I think that we have, well, first of all, if you have a great director, which we did, Casey Nicola, um, for Aladdin, uh, it helps you, you know, they help you explore everything that you possibly can and fail as much as you possibly can in the room so you hopefully don't fail once you get on the stage in front of an audience. I mean, that's really the blessing of a really good director, I feel. We had, uh, you know, a, the only challenge that I see is because we don't have a bird as Iago. We have Don Darrell Rivera, and I think that it takes us Probably a couple of minutes from our first scene just to get the audience to adjust. But wow, he does right. it. That's right. what's brilliant yes, he about does. it. Yes. He right. absolutely does it. So, you know, there are concessions that we make for the stage that we didn't have to make for the film, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And you as the genie, uh, every move oh, gosh. taken uh, into account by Disney all the time? I mean, mm -hmm. Tom Schumacher is in the room. So it's all like <laughs> 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 we, I mean, the nice thing about the genie is, of course... I mean, yes, you get the call that you'd be the genie, and the first thing, like Ashley, I it was never on my radar, so I was, I literally was like, I don't even understand where to begin, like with this, with this role, because it is such a, it's such an iconic thing. I mean, it's crazy the iconic roles that are, are that are associated with the Disney brand. It's really, it's really unbelievable and um, and pretty special, I think, um, but. Obviously, with that comes pressure, and in your mental sort of actory brain, like, oh my god! But the genie, when you play a character who everyone is l waiting for, like, and they want to love you, mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a gift, you know? It's such a gift, and and the authenticity of yourself, bringing that to the part, I think, is where I have found my sort of sweet spot. You know, mm -hmm. is is truly going back to this. I just wrote an article for Backstage about like the sort of young chubby Michael James Scott, like back in the day, and like how he just had no care in the world. And it's crazy how I've come back to that, and that has <laughs> what is what has has connected me and a whole new sort of like Oprah aha moment of my career right now is this this sort of chubby black kid who's just like living life. You can't and, be that chubby playing this role though for well, a year. I mean. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> um. <laughs> Tom, before we let you go, and then Christine has one last question for everybody, can you give us a um, couple of titles for shows we might look forward to coming out of uh, Disney for Broadway? Ooh. Mm. Oh, God. See, they're already thinking, is there a part in it for me? That's what they're thinking. Don't hold Lucky back. Lucky number four. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I did read in the post, somebody <laughs> leaked that we were going to do oh. a revival of Aida. Where did uh, that come uh, from? Uh, oh, uh, uh, oh, wait, Michael, that's you. So, uh, 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 yes, we, we are reviving um, uh, Aida. We're working on it right now, and uh, and we're deep into that. We're very, we're really deep into Princess Bride, which is, uh, All right. which right. is really big. We're doing a big revival of Beauty and the Beast. Right now, it's an interesting moment in time because there's not enough space for all the shows that we have. All right, and right. The theater's we, all booked. Well, we have three on Broadway. We're about to do five more Frozens around the world, Ooh. which is big, right? Let so it go. as we roll, <laughs> let it go, let it go. <laughs> please. So you know, we, we have 21 shows playing around the world tonight. And, um, and now that, and we're going to add five more into that, and then we're going to bring Beauty back, and we're going to bring Aida back, and put them out in the world. So that's a handful, but certainly Princess Bride is is of the big new titles, and uh, that's all I'm going to tell you. Can I put in a request for one of my favorites? Sure, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Ooh, I love that song. Well, you know what, Portobello I'm, Road. That's a great yeah. song. I'm I'm not going to lie to you. We're, we actually just did a reading. In fact, Ashley Brown um, ah. was in the reading. Yeah. And her age of not believing was breathtaking. Mm. And uh, yeah, Bedknobs is, um, we have a, a really interesting plan for Bedknobs, which I'm not going to use your platform to announce. <laughs> <laughs> was that, was that just a coincidence? Did you know that, Michael Riedel? Everything I do, I do right <laughs> off the top of my head. Amazing. All right. So uh, please, will you always share our favorite show tunes, but I'd love to know from you. You can only choose one if you had to choose your favorite Disney show tune. So, mm. yeah. I only get one. Yes, Ashley, just one. I'm sorry. but And tell us why. I love, I thought I didn't, was, 
I'll choose one. I have to say a change in me from Beauty and the Beast. It was added for the Broadway show. Um, and it's a song that I got to sing and that I continue to sing. And it just, it never gets old. I love it. A change in me from Beauty and the Beast. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and choice. Feed the Birds. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and one more. No. <laughs> and you, Jonathan? Me. Um, Take us back to a... A song that I don't get to sing, but I get to listen to every night is Proud of Your Boy. And oh, yeah. My, I have a... Latin. Tom knows. I have a very long connection to that song. I first heard it in demo form in probably 1991 or 92 in a studio in Los Angeles, and then it was... Then I never heard it again in the show. And the last time I heard it sung before we began again was when Alan Menken sang it at Howard Ashman's memorial service. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. broke my heart. And to this day... Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, my first scene in the show comes right after that song. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to shut it down, but I love that song. I think it's a beautiful song. Mm. Mm. And Michael? I, oh gosh, I mean, I feel like, the, I, I think for me, the it would probably be, um, uh, it's, it goes back and forth between Shadowland and... Um, and One. I know, I know. <laughs> Shadowland, I'm circling, I'm circling Shadowland's a good pick. I know, yes. it's so good, and yeah. I, I love singing. I used to sing it, like, in the key and, like, live my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was like, yeah. Not in the key. In the key and, and in Miss, Miss Headley's key and live my life, and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm Nala. You're not tall enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nala. But, like, it, I, I just love the music of that so much, and it just, I remember watching it for the first time, and I remember, like, this sort of like rush coming over me, and I just thought, wow, like, wow! It's just the melody of it. It just takes me to a place that I'm. I just, I just love it so much. There's Tom, just, do you have one? Yeah, Chris, it's hard because I'm going to offend all my <laughs> mm. collaborators, but it would actually be "He Lives in You" from The Lion King mm. by yeah. Mark Manchina and Lebo M. And the reason why is because um, so many people that I know. I mean, I the first time I heard the song was actually way, way before we did the stage version. Um, when Mark Mancina presented it to me on the ukulele in my office, oh, and I yeah. threw him out when we were making the movie. I said, Elton John's writing the songs. Get out of my office. And uh, <laughs> but, but now as I travel the world, that song resonates so deeply because there is no one who sees The Lion King who either hasn't experienced the loss of someone or anticipates yeah. the loss of someone. And this idea of, um, of comforting someone in that position and that, that there's a bigger picture than we may see is so powerful. And the song lands so beautifully in the show. So that, that would be my favorite because it has a resonance beyond just the show. I've always liked the God's Love Nubia from Aida. Mm. Can you put that on my Aida underwear? I, the, well, the God's, <laughs> love, <laughs> the God's Love Nubia and Michael Reed. <laughs> that's it. Any other requests? No, Michael, no, no, that's no. it. Good. Well, thank you so much. This has been this has been fantastic. Thank you for all the the beautiful music, the films, the shows. It's absolutely wonderful. You keep us so very happy. This is Inside Broadway. I'm Christine Nagy with Michael, Michael Riddle. We'll talk to you next time yeah. on Inside Broadway. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.